Hi there, I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. Welcome to the Spa Doctor Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking about regenerative therapies for skin, hair, and sexual function, specifically stem cell and platelet-rich plasma injection therapies. Don't worry, we're going to explain what those are. I've had this guest on before, but it's been a few years, so I wanted to have her back on to share the latest in these procedures. I often recommend these procedures for my patients to help with things like acne scarring and for improvements in skin texture and tone. So I wanted to be sure you're aware of these as well. My guest today is Dr. Amy Killen, who is board certified in emergency medicine and is fellowship trained in anti-aging and regenerative medicine. Dr. Killen works closely with Dr. Harry Adelson at Doceri Clinics in Park City, offering patients cutting edge stem cell regenerative treatments for skin, hair, and sexual optimization. And you've you've probably seen Dr. Harry Adelson. He's been on my podcast before talking about, about PRP and stem cells for pain management. Dr. Killen is also the medical director of an integrated medicine clinic in Salt Lake City. She has spoken internationally about regenerative treatment options. She teaches physician training courses and is recognized as a leader in the fields of regenerative aesthetics and regenerative sexual medicine. In today's interview, Dr. Killen explains PRP and stem cell treatments for skin, hair, and sexual dysfunction, what they are, how they work, what the procedures are like, and the benefits that she sees in her patients. And she also shares some of the latest in the technologies that that she's using, the things that help enhance the results of, of these procedures. I'm actually going in to see Dr. Killen tomorrow at Desari Clinics, and we will talk about my upcoming procedure as well. So please enjoy this interview. Amy, it's so great to have you back on my podcast. It's great to be here. Thank you. It's been three years since we were on the podcast before. (laughs) I can't believe it's been that long. And yeah, and and so I know there are people listening, watching that have never seen you before. And then there are some people like, oh, I remember her. So let's get started, though, with a little bit of um, a recap of, um, you know, kind of who you are, how you got into this. And, and then we'll, we'll do a little bit more review of some of the things you do and then talk about the new stuff because a lot's happened in three years. And um, so you were an ER doctor and then made a change into this field. So tell everybody how that worked. Yeah, so I did ER for about 10 years, uh, and I worked in a very busy ER in Austin, um, saw lots of cool, good good cases. Um, but toward the end of that, I started becoming kind of worn, worn down myself, you know, just not sleeping, eating garbage, drinking tons of Diet Cokes and energy drinks and, and such. So I was kind of getting, um, I was getting really worn out. And at the same time, I was seeing all these patients who would come in over and over again for sort of these chronic medical problems who we didn't have time to really educate them or give them information. And they just kept coming back. So I kind of decided that I needed to, to figure out a different different field so I could teach my patients how to be healthier and to prevent illnesses and also to kind of get myself healthier because I was not doing such a good job. So I started doing preventative medicine, integrative medicine, and then eventually transitioned into also doing this regenerative medicine, which is kind of using your own body's healing powers, own stem cells and things like that. Great. Great. Awesome. So let's talk about these a little bit, these regenerative um, types of medicine. We've got stem cells and PRP. And then we got, you got something new too. That's an addition from what you talked about before. And your specialty is really skin and sex, right? Yeah, <laughs> so skin and sex. Great. <laughs> right. So, um, why, first of all, why those two areas? Yeah. The, <laughs> well, it's interesting. You know, they seem very different, right? They seem like things that you would never do together. Um, but I find that they're very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, first of all, there's uh, a lot of people don't talk about problems that they have in both of these areas, in skin, in hair, and sex as well. Um, they become embarrassed. There's kind of a stigma associated with some people in talking about problems they're having. Um, so I think that's one thing. The other thing is when people have problems with, you know, skin, hair, or sexual problems, it really creates a confidence problem. They, they, they kind of don't have the confidence they did before. They go out, you know, kind of go out in the world and they see things differently. And I find that if we can make changes, even small changes in 
some of these areas, we see big changes in their self-esteem and their confidence. And then the other thing is, you know, a lot of the things that we do um, from a preventative standpoint for our skin um, are also beneficial for our sexual organs uh, and also for our hair and like, you know, sort of some of the lifestyle stuff that we do, it benefits your whole body. And there's some overlap in that as well as some of the treatments. Right. And, and as a naturopathic physician, I really believe in really supporting the body's innate ability to heal using a lot of the lifestyle, healthy lifestyle and natural medicine. And, but there's still some times where we want to do somewhat what, you know, I call minimally invasive. And I think that this is what PRP and stem cell therapy, this regenerative therapy is. I think it's a great addition with, especially as we're getting older and, and changes are happening with our bodies to help kind of give it a boost without turning to really invasive things like plastic surgery or some of these harmful actually procedures that people are doing and uh, because it, it is supporting the body and, um, and, and using technology in a way to, to enhance it. So let's talk about first, let's talk about PRP and what that is a kind of a review of that. So PRP stands for platelet rich plasma and uh, it's been around for 30 or more years. It's commonly used in all different fields. And what it is, is we take the patient's own blood, we centrifuge it, so we spin it and we isolate the platelets. So we get these concentrated platelets in the serum and those platelets house a ton of different growth factors. So, you know, you can think of it as normally when you, when you cut yourself, like cut your skin or something, the platelets are one of the first things that come in and they cause clotting, right? People know about that with platelets, but they cause clotting and then they also sort of begin this healing cascade, right? sending out growth factors that tells the body, hey, we need some more blood vessels over here. We need some more collagen. We need some more cartilage, whatever is injured. So the platelets have all these growth factors in them. So we can use those growth factors to kind of trick the body into regenerating itself and, and rejuvenating the skin. So that's how we use it with, with the skin. Okay. So then the procedure, which by the way, I'm coming into your office tomorrow Yay! To, to, <laughs> to, to have a PRP facial. facial. They're also called Vampire, vampire facial. Yeah, Ooh, vampire terrible. facial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about that term, but I guess the idea is that you're talking about blood and you know vampires. I, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I made it, yeah. I'm not sure why it's called that, but I, vampire facial is kind of one of the, the the terms people use for it. But PRP facial, same thing. Okay, and I've been in to see you once before, so I I to to get this done, and so I kind of know what to expect. But for everybody else, to walk us through the procedure. So we'll put some numbing cream on first. It's like a lidocaine cream. So, this is, so it's not painful at all. Um, and then after about 20, 30 minutes, wash the cream off. And for the vampire facial or the PRP facial, uh, we'll be doing microneedling with it, with the PRP. So I'll collect some blood from you. We'll centrifuge it, spin it while you're numbing. And then as soon as you're done numbing, I will apply the PRP all over the face and I'll do the microneedling, which is like a little device that has these like 10 little bitty needles that just go up and down really quickly. And they create these little tiny micro channels that go about two millimeters down into your skin. So it goes into the dermis layer of your skin. Um, so we'll do the microneedling all over your face and then we'll keep applying layers of PRP so we can get the PRP in the key into the into those into those deep activating collagen production just because of the mechanical force of the microneedling. So we'll do all of that in probably an hour and um, it's totally painless. And then we also have the ability, if we want, to also do some injections of PRP, um, which can hurt a little bit, can kind of sting, but you know, in areas like around the eyes and around the nose and you know, here, like areas where you have some volume loss, not you, but people in general, um, we, can inject, <laughs> we can inject PRP and over time it can kind of help increase collagen production a little deeper uh, in the skin as well. Okay, okay. Great. And, great. And do you also do, do, you also do, do it the neck? Mm -hmm. Possibly hands, any other areas? Yeah, I do the neck quite a bit. So with my the neck, I'm usually just doing the microneedling. I can you can inject it certainly, um, but the microneedling works great because the neck skin is, is fairly thin for a lot of people. Uh, we can do hands. We can you know, I mean you can literally do this anywhere on your body. Uh, it just becomes yeah hair. We do a lot of hair, so hair for hair loss or just I have a lot of patients who just want to have sort of healthier hair, like they haven't even lost hair, and we'll do PRP injections in the scalp, and they'll see improvements in uh, in the health of hair as well as people who've lost hair. So we do it on the hair, uh, and then of course I do the sexual stuff as well. So PRP is so safe because it's just your own blood serum that I'm just putting right back in you in special places. Okay, so with the hair, do you do the microneedling or the injections? So, I'm sorry, or do you do both? 
Yeah, you can do both. So okay. it depends on what's going on. But uh, usually I'll do injections for most people first. And then if it's someone who has really short hair and I can get to the scalp pretty easily, then I'll do the microneedling on top of the injections. Okay. And so do you ever have contraindications for, for these procedures for both the scalp as well as, you know, the, the rest of the body? Yeah. Pregnancy and breastfeeding is always a contraindication just because we, it's just not been studied. So we don't do any of these things on, on women who are pregnant. Um, any active infections in the treatment areas, you know, we wouldn't do a procedure or do put needles through like an active skin infection or, or active acne. We wouldn't go right into the acne. Um, if you have an active cancer, we don't generally do these procedures. But for the most part, they're safe on anyone, including anyone with all different types of skin, you know, skin colors and skin tones, um, which is unusual because a lot of the laser treatments and and things you you know they can become problematic in women who have women and men who have darker skin tones. But these procedures, the PRP microneedling and such, we can do them for anyone, which is great. Yeah, that that is great. And um, and so, what should people expect? I mean, like I've referred people to you um, for the PRP facials for anti-aging benefits as well as acne scarring. And like you said, you I, I always tell people wait until your acne is cleared up before you go and address acne scarring. Mm -hmm. But what are those the most common things? Or what do people usually expect to see once they have this procedure? So anything, so what, what, the, what this does is it actually activates the fibroblasts, which are the skin cells, to create more collagen and elastin and hyaluronic acid. And those are just three of the sort of building blocks of skin that as you get older, and by older I mean after like age 25, you start to decrease production of all of those parts of your skin. So what these things, what, what PRP does and stem cells and exosomes and all of that is it, it increases your skin's production of those components of the skin so that you have better skin structure, more bounce back in your skin, um, and, and more hydration in your skin. So we see things that go along with that. So it's things like improved texture of your skin, um, tone, color, uh, people who have uh, like fine lines can be helped with it as well. Acne scarring or other scarring can be helped. Um, pigment, so like hyperpigmentation or like, you know, dark spots can sometimes be helped uh, with this as well. And just kind of keeps your skin like a glow that it's hard to even describe sometimes. Like it, I think it's the blood flow probably, but just your skin is just like brighter and, uh, and looks Looks more healthy. How many how many of these procedures do people need to have to see these results? You can see the results after one, but I do tell people if, if possible to come in with the PRP alone, especially to come in and do, you know, maybe one every two or three months for a couple of times, two or three times. Um, I, it's, that's, that's also oftentimes hard to do with schedules. So, you know, but even just one treatment um, is, is great. I try to do it, you know, on myself a couple of times a year, if I can just get a couple of days off, um, not off. I still work with my face looking red, but you know, like off of interviews or things like that. So I, th I think it's a really good maintenance kind of thing for your skin. Yeah. And as you, um, I think as your office knows, I had to kind of reschedule my day the following day <laughs> so that I didn't have a bunch of video interviews. And yeah. you know, I think it probably, people would have understood if I'd explained what the procedure was that I just right. had, but still, you know, I don't think that I need to do that. So it's good to take a day off because yeah. I understand for like a day or two, there's some redness from what I recall from that last one I had. Yeah. yeah. You're very red the first day, like you leave and you're like very red. And then by the next morning, usually it's like a, it's kind of a pinkish, almost like a sunscreen or some, some sunburn. Um, but some people are a little bit more red for a few days. And then you can have some peeling that happens at like three or four days, but it's, it's like a sunburn peel. So it's not anything, you know, crazy. Um, and you can wear makeup and sunscreen and all of that after the first day. So this is a pretty minimal as far as downtime goes. For most people, it's not a big deal at all to go back to work the next day. Okay. All right. Great. I might have to do some pictures. I'll do, we'll do some before and after pictures and maybe yeah. Yeah, so people can, can kind of see because I, yeah, I don't remember it being anything, um, you know, like, especially being in Park City, Utah, people are probably just going to think, oh, she's been out skiing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and people at my office are so used to me, you know, experimenting on myself and coming in with crazy faces and, you know, bruises here and there that they're just always like, all right, what'd you do this time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, minimal downtime, which is great because a lot of procedures are, you know, people uh, are in a lot of pain or they're just feel uncomfortable being out in public. So, so that's good. Um, and so what is the ideal age 
bracket for the anti-aging benefits? I mean, because there's got to be at some point where maybe it's not as beneficial, right? And then at some point, because before 25, right? <laughs> Don't really need. <laughs> yeah, if you're before 25, you still got lots of good collagen. Um, you know, really anywhere. Most of my patients are probably between about 30 and 60, 65. Um, it's a pretty broad range, though, as long as you have good platelets. Um, which most people continue to have good platelets. Um, the things that sometimes if you have a chronic medical problem like diabetes or you're a smoker, they can affect the quality of your platelets and so that they may not, you may not have as much benefit. But even in those patients, the microneedling part of it, just the mechanical sort of trauma of the device will still activate some collagen production. You can still see benefits. So uh, there's, there's no one that I won't do it on. I mean, no adult, but I do think probably 30 to 65 or so is, it's the, is the, most common patients that I see. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, yeah, I guess your platelets at, over time too are not, um, quite, um, they don't work quite as well. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we'll talk about stem cells in a moment because that's, that's another thing that people can consider. Um, but how do you know if someone has good platelets? Because you just mentioned if you have good platelets. <laughs> but you don't really know. I would say most people have good platelets. I do tell people if they're smoking, if they're actively smoking, that, that just to come back when they when they quit smoking. Um, I think it's a waste of, of money and their time um, to be doing the, at least the PRP part in people who are smoking because the platelets are just not, they're not good quality. The healing, you know, you're not healing as well. And it's something that can't, you can stop. You know, I know it's super hard to do, but you can. Mm -hmm. So that's a patient population that I recommend that they uh, you know, try to stop smoking at least a few weeks before doing the procedure. Um, we also don't do it in people who are actively on steroids, like, you know, like prednisone or any kind of immune suppressive steroid, because we want to have some of that inflammation that's part of the healing cascade. So if people are on chronic doses of that, we have them get off of those things before we do these procedures um, and limit things that can cause blood thinning, you know, to, 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 to decrease bruising. So things like fish oil, high dose fish oil, um, ibuprofen, naproxen, aspirin, medications that can um, can affect your platelet function. We have those people, people stop those a week or so beforehand. So there's some things like that that we do to try to make your platelets nice and strong um, before you do the procedure. I imagine living a healthy lifestyle in general is going to keep your platelets in better shape, right? I mean, it doesn't... I mean, it helps with healing. You know, it helps obviously eat a good healthy diet and, and exercise and, you know, even sort of mind body stuff. All of that's going to help just with general healing and the way that these procedures work for patients. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So now you mentioned that it's good for hyperpigmentation. I think there are some people that would be concerned if they tend to have hyperpigmentation that it could make it worse because some injections or um, any kind of needle therapy really is can make hyperpigmentation worse, right? It doesn't tend to. The only thing I will say this is, is there's the potential in patients who have darker skin or who are or who are prone to hyperpigmentation to if they get out in the sun too early after uh, microneedling to have problems with uh, sort of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation patient where they get the darker spots. So I always tell patients it's important to wear sunblock or sunscreen or big hats or just stay out of the sun for at least about a month after these procedures just to give your skin the best chance of not developing, uh, worsening hyperpigmentation for afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I know you mentioned that. I'm like, that's partly why I waited until the winter time. <laughs> You were like, I want to ski. How am I going to ski? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm going to be wearing my face mask up here and everything. I'll be good. <laughs> That's um, good. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, and so with, with hair, um, I know hair loss is a big thing for both men and women. So this can be a great therapy. How effective is this in helping uh, men and women grow their hair back? So in the studies that have been done, there are a, a decent number of studies. If you do three PRP treatments, space about a month apart, so three total, uh, you'll see an increase in hairs per centimeter squared of about 18 to 33 hairs. So per centimeter squared on your scalp, 18 to 33 hairs. Um, that's, and that's mostly studied in men, although we do have some studies with women as well. Um, most commonly has been looked at for male pattern baldness, um, but we do know it also can be effective for other things like um, some of the alopecia that are autoimmune disorders and things like that and that are more common in women. Mm, okay. Is it is there anybody that's contraindicated for for the um, hair loss and alopecia um, considerations? 
No, the only thing that's, I, I tell patients with hair, it's, it's important that, you know, that it's not usually a one and done kind of thing. It's like oftentimes we want to know, first of all, what's causing your hair loss? You know, if it's your thyroid or your low iron or your super stressed out life or your, you know, hormonal birth control pills or whatever is causing it, then you have to address that also. Otherwise you'll keep having the hair loss. Um, but if we know it's, you know, if we know what's causing it, we're working on that, um, then pretty much anyone can get the PRP treatments. Most commonly I'm treating um, men with male pattern baldness or women who just have some kind of, you know, general diffuse hair loss, which is often also a hormonal um, kind of cause. Yeah. So what I usually recommend is, is people get that under those root causes under control and then go and get the, the PRP treatments because it's... Yeah you know, it's going to work a lot better and uh, not be frustrating for them and uh, losing money from, exactly. <laughs> from doing to you know, have these underlying yeah. causes that are contributing to it. So that's great. Um, all right. So let's talk about stem cell. Unless there's anything else about PRP that you wanted to talk about as far as what you do with PRP. Um, you want to talk about um, the stem cells and how you use those and wh how that's different. So stem cells, yeah, so it's a little bit different. Um, stem, one of the ways that PRP works when we use it is it goes into your body and it kind of talks to your, to your stem cells and tells them, hey, it's time to get back to work. We need you to start making more of this or making more of that. So it's kind of like a communication device for stem cells. So we also can give patients actual stem cells. So that's sort of another step up. Um, most commonly, we're using the patient stem cells, so getting like stem cells from their fat. So we'll do like a little, like a little mini liposuction where we get some fat and then we can concentrate it and get the stem cells from the fat and then I can add that I usually still do the PRP also but I can add those stem cells to the PRP and do the facial injections the facial microneedling the hair like all the things that I do uh, I can do it with the actual stem cells from the patient there's also the opportunity to use stem cells from other people like umbilical cord stem cells which we would just we just buy from a lab that has them that are sort of you know they're they're fresh, healthy umbilical cells. Um, most of the time in my procedures, I, I do that. I do these procedures with stem cells. Oftentimes I do it in conjunction with my colleague, Dr. Adelson, who's doing sort of joint injections, back injections, neck injections. So we can get the stem cells one time and then we can inject them, you know, in the face, in the hair, in the neck, the back, the knees, and kind of cover a large area. Cause it's a little bit invasive to have to go in and get the stem cells, you know, from the patient's fat. Yeah, I know. I asked you, should I be doing stem cells as part of this? And, and you're like, yeah, it's good. You know, probably don't really need that. Why don't you wait until if and when you need it for other things and then add that on? So that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. um, and as you said, um, you you work with um, Dr. Harry Adelson. Dr. Harry Adelson has been on the podcast. Um, and so it's talked about how he uses PRP and stem cell for pain management. So you're in the practice with, in, in his uh, clinic with him, some um, addressing the aesthetic stuff because he, he wants to specialize in the pain part and you specialize in more of the aesthetics, the skin, the sexual health function, um, hair, those sorts of things. And so a lot of people now are coming in to Doceri Clinic for the whole, the whole thing and they're getting the yeah. whole makeover, right? Yeah. Like so yeah, I have a lot of patients because we, we, we sedate them for all of that, which is great because they're asleep. You just take a little nap and mm -hmm. then Dr. Adelson will inject all the different joints um, in the neck, and the back, and the, you know, the elbows and the knees and whatever is bothering patients. And then at the same time, I can do facial injections, hair injections, and then the sexual injections if they want it. Because we have a lot of patients who are getting kind of all of these injections, um, even if they don't have problems in one area, just because we feel like it can sort of help prevent some of the problems later on. Right, right. And, and so, and, but in Doceri Clinic, they're really doing autologous with so your, your own stem cells, right? They're not getting um, other sources of stem cells, correct? We are using exosomes um, as well as the patient's own stem cells. So generally we're doing bone marrow cells from the patient. We're doing fat cells from the patient, fat derived stem cells. And then recently, like the last six or eight months, we've also been using these exosomes as well, which are sort of another class of these activators of stem cells. Right. So let's, okay. So yeah, so this is something new that we didn't talk about before in the interview was the exosome. So yeah. explain that a little bit more. I know you just did a, a big overview of that, but how does that add, how is that added in? Why did you decide, why did you all decide that you wanted to start adding this in? 
So exosomes are, um, they're, I think of them as these little sort of messenger bubbles is how I describe them to patients. So, you know, you have your stem cells and your stem cells, in order to communicate with the cells around them, they send out these little messenger bubbles, these little bubbles that come off the stem cells. They have a bunch of information in them and then they float around to other cells and they latch onto those cells and they give the information to those cells. So that's what exosomes are. They're just little tiny, tiny little bubbles that have growth factors and proteins and, and messenger RNA which is sort of gives the, blu the, the blueprints to make proteins. And they are what communicate sometimes between stem cells. So we can, we can get these exosomes, which are made from um, healthy umbilical stem cells, isolate the exosomes. And so we just have the exosomes. Um, and then we can use those as well. And they do some of the same types of things that stem cells do in that they're communicating to the stem cells that are already in your body and telling them, hey, we need more collagen. We need more this. We need more that. Um, what's great about stem cells for the skin, I'm sorry, for exosomes for the skin, is that they're little bitty, tiny things, way smaller than platelets and way smaller than stem cells. So you can actually even apply them topically. And they've seen that after like three days, it gets down into the deeper level layers of the skin and will start increasing collagen production and things like that. So I love them for the skin and even for the hair because they're so small, we can kind of get them anywhere we want, um, oftentimes without, without making a big effort. Okay. So now, and is this safe? It's super safe. As far as we've, we've seen, and there's, a, there's hundreds of studies on the stem cells uh, from the patient as well as these exosomes. Um, you know, certainly we, we make sure, again, that patient is generally healthy before we do all these procedures on them. We make sure they don't have any active cancers and things like that. Um, but but aside from that, they're really safe. They don't cause an immune reaction in your body. Like if we were to give you someone else's blood or you know blood products or things like that, you would have this immune response and you could it could be dangerous. Um, but the way that these stem cells and exosomes um, are they that they come is that they they don't cause that immune reaction. So you don't you don't have that. It's just it just is, it just functions really really well. And you mentioned that they're healthy. So there's uh, definitely a, uh, a process by which these go through to make sure that they're come from healthy individuals, right? Yeah, absolutely. They, they screen the, the mothers before that. Of course, these are, these are donated um, umbilical cords that no, no one's right. harmed in the making of these umbilical cords. Um, and they're donated by the moms. The moms are screened. And then the cords and the blood and the products inside there are also screened for all different communicable dis diseases and all different problems because we don't want to pass anything along to anyone else. Mm -hmm. I have not ever heard of a, of, of a case, uh, and I've been doing this for a little while, where someone's, you know, gotten one of these uh, treatments and has, has gotten some kind of disease or illness from yeah. someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, you know, this is all something that people, this all works together, right? For, for the skin, you can use it in the hair and then also with sexual function too, right? Yes. Yes. So I do uh, for both men and women. So for the women, I do uh, sort of a, 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 it's called the O shot or the orgasm shot. Um, but then I also, that's just PRP. Then I also will use the exosomes and stem cells with it to kind of boost it even further. But the O shot is injections into the vagina and clitoris where we're actually doing the same kind of things. We're increasing blood flow. We're increasing um, some of the tissue in there. Uh, so, so people will see things like improved sensitivity and uh, responsiveness and vaginal lubrication, um, tightness, uh, even improvements in stress urinary incontinence, which is, you know, when you jump on the trampoline and you, and you kind of leak a little bit of urine um, as women get older, we can see improvements in that because we're injecting the space around the urethra. So we can do all of that for, for women. And then for men, we have the P shot, which is the priapus shot, again, with PRP alone or with different stem cells and exosomes, where we inject into the, the corpora cavernosa, the, the tubes in the penis that fill with blood. And we actually can see improvements, increase in blood vessel formation um, and improvements in blood flow over time with that. Right. And how's the, how, how are the results on that um, as far as getting feedback from patients? Because you've been doing this for a while. I have, yeah. Um, I think the feedback's great. I like to still combine these procedures with other things that also work. So for instance, in men, I will oftentimes combine the P-shot with uh, like shockwave therapy, low intensity shockwave therapy or gains wave, which is a, basically a, it's a way to use sound waves to increase blood vessel formation and nitric oxide in the penis. And it's, it's proven it's very safe. So oftentimes I'll use that, almost always I'll use a, some of that shockwave therapy with the, the PRP or the stem cells. Um, and then we also talk about healthy lifestyle and hormones 
hormones and nitric oxide. And, you know, it all goes together. As you know, uh, it's not, you don't want to just treat one thing and walk away because you're not going to have a good, as good a result as you are if you treat a bunch of different things and educate the patient and then they'll see really good improvements. Right. And, you know, some of these things that you're addressing can be very debilitating for people. I mean, the urinary incontinence for women that have had um, babies and you know, later on in life and the, it, you know, nobody wants to wear Depends or, you know, have that kind of issue. And, yeah. and, it's, and there really is a, there's not a lot of options for people as far as treatment on these. Yeah. So to have an, uh, a, a procedure like this where you're, and you're actually using your own, uh, you know, your own uh, platelets or using your own stem cells and being able to do that. I really think it's amazing to be able to have that option. And then also for people who want to improve their sexual function. I mean, Hey, we, we should all have se healthy sex lives well into yeah. our, 70s and beyond, right? Absolutely. I mean, why not? We should. We know that sexual longevity is linked to general longevity. People who are, have a more active, sort of healthy sex life, um, they live longer. And there's it's been studied in men and women. Um, and so, you know, certainly it can help with relationships and all kinds of things. But it's something that I think is not talked about, especially for women. Uh, we don't talk about that as much as we do for men. And I think it's important to, to think about, you know, doing some of these simple kinds of things uh, to help increase blood flow and, and increase tissue regeneration. Yeah. And so how many of these treatments, uh, the O-shot, P-shot, do people need to have in order to see the benefits? Is that a one or multiple? Usually, I mean, one, people will see benefits after one oftentimes. I, I sometimes have patients that will come back for another treatment um, because either they had a partial benefit and they want to come sort of step it up more, or after about a year and a half to two years, oftentimes the benefits will kind of start to go down a little bit. So people will sometimes come in to just kind of keep that going. Because if you think about it, you're going to keep aging. So what, you know, whatever we do, your body's still going to keep aging, unfortunately. Um, so some of these things, we, we have to repeat them because, you, you know, you continue to age. Age. Right. Absolutely. And do our, um, our, so our stem cells do change with age, right? Um, is, so is there a point in our lives where stem cell therapy isn't going to be particularly helpful? Well, you you know, we have this. we have patients who are, uh, are who are quite a bit older, I and mean, by older, you know, seventies, eighties, who will sometimes have use their own stem cells and have good results. But we do tend to see that they're, they, oftentimes those patients are not going to have as good a result um, as, as someone who's younger. So in, a lot of times in older patients will oftentimes recommend things like the exosomes or even umbilical cells, stem cells, or things like that, just to have, give them a better chance of having good results with their procedures. Right. And then also having better results with procedures are all the things that you talked about, that, you know, the healthy lifestyle and um, other therapies that help support um, and so what are some of the things that you recommend? So, so when somebody leaves after they had a procedure, what are the things that are going to really optimize the benefits? So I love uh, like red light therapy, low level light therapy for skin and for hair. There's, there's some great benefits to that. Like the, the little hats you wear on your head, the laser caps and you know, all the different, uh, there's different brands that you wear on your hair for, for hair uh, restoration. Those are great, super safe. It's just light. So there's a lot of different kinds of light therapy that you can use for your face, uh, including for acne prevention, which I think is wonderful for people like, you know, teenagers and things who are having a lot of acne. You don't want to use the drugs. You can use blue light therapy that you literally just wear a blue light mask, you know, for a few minutes a day, and you can see a huge reduction in, in that. Um, so I like light therapy. Um, certainly diet's important. Um, intermittent fasting is great for stem cells and increasing your stem cell activity in general. So if, you know, whether you're doing a just overnight kind of a 16 hour fast or, or several days of fasting, that can be helpful. And we have a lot of patients do that sort of before they'll come in for stem cell treatments. Um, I like the nitric oxide uh, boosting supplements and foods, especially for sexual function. Um, and then getting hormones, you know, in balance, I think is really important uh, for hair as well as for skin, um, you know, in addition to sort of normal lifestyle kind of stuff. Right. It's also important for sexual function too, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very. And that's all changing as we age. And again, you know, I think we're, we're living longer. We want to have a healthier, more vibrant life as, as we get older. And I know Dave Asprey talks about uh, coming into clinics and getting procedures. I know this is not a secret. This is not a confidentiality thing, but, right. um, but you know, he talks about wanting to live to be a uh, hundred and 
something, right? Yeah, and, it's 100 and something. <laughs> 100 and something. And so, you know, there, I think there are more and more people that we just, we want to have this quality of life not just living longer, but having the quality of life. And as we are, as a society living longer, we want to um, have a higher quality of life. And I think that the work that you and, and Dr. Adelson are doing is, is helping people with that. So I, I, uh, um, I think that's fantastic. So Amy, thanks so much for coming on today and sharing all this information. Um, tell everybody where they can find you and and you have people travel right to come into park city to into utah yeah. to, for treatment so we have probably most of our patients uh, are from out of out of town out of state out of country we have people travel out so we're up in park city utah which is very close to salt lake city for flying and purposes um i you can reach me on the doceri medical website which is d-o-c-e-r-e -E medical and then i also have a dr amy killen uh, website or you know .com, which is very easy to find as well, and can link to kind of all the different places that I work and the things that I do. Excellent. All right. Thanks again, Amy, for coming on. Keep Thank us posted you. if you've got anything new coming up. Then we want to want to have Becky on and keep us posted. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow in the office. Okay. We'll do. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this interview today with Dr. Amy Killen. And I would love to hear your feedback. Have you had procedures like this done? If so, I'd love to know from you what you thought, whether they're with Dr. Killen or with some other practitioner. Please post in the comment section below the interview on my website or on YouTube about your experience. I'd love to hear what kind of benefits that you have seen and what the procedures were like for you. And if you'd like to learn more about Dr. Killen, you can find that information at thespadoctor.com below her podcast interview on the website. And while you're visiting, while you're on the website, I invite you to join the Spot Doctor community so you don't miss any of our upcoming shows. And if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend you get your customized skin report at theskinquiz.com. You just fill out a quick survey, quick quiz. It's free and takes just a few moments and you get your own customized skin report telling you what information your skin might be trying to tell you about your health, what you can do to optimize it. Just go to theskinquiz.com. Also, I invite you to join me on social media, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube and join the conversation. And I'll see you next time on the Spot Doctor podcast. <laughs>